Stockton residents, uh, this is Mayor Robert Sullivan. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, of course, this is the, uh, the virtual town hall that uh, my office uh, wanted to do uh, to get information out. Uh, of course, my office, uh, since the COVID-19 pandemic has, uh, has hit the city of Brock and in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, my office has been getting a lot of questions about the city's response to COVID-19. And I wanted to come before you in this virtual setting to answer some of the questions uh, those specifically asked most frequently. Uh, one of the most frequently asked questions uh, is about getting information uh, in Haitian, Cape Verdean, and Spanish. And I want to reiterate um, that making the information about COVID-19, the coronavirus, uh, and all our city services available to every single resident is a top priority of mine. And I've been doing that on a regular basis, and I think this is an important piece of the information. When I became mayor of the city of Brockton, and it's an honor and a privilege to serve in that capacity, uh, the city did not have a formal translation service available. So my administration is currently working to solve that problem. And towards that end, uh, in addition to English, this virtual town hall will be dubbed into Haitian Creole, Cape Verdean Creole, and Spanish. And all those translations are gonna be aired on Brockton Community Access BCA and will be made available online. I wanna thank the school department, Brockton Public Schools for helping with language assistance and make sure that people within the city of Brockton know uh, that it will be translated uh, on the city's website as well. We have that capability. So with that being said, I'm gonna get into the questions. Uh, and again, thank you for your attention to this. Um, so the first question was asked by Brockton resident uh, Bruce Burleson. And Mr. Burleson asked, uh, Brockton currently has more confirmed COVID-19 cases uh, than the rest of the county combined. Um, what additional measures do you as mayor intend uh, to get this under control. And I thank you, Mr. Burleson, for your questions and your, uh, your, your involvement in the community. Um, first of all, let, let me make it clear, City of Brockton is a city and it's the only city and the largest community in Plymouth County. So we're almost uh, twice as big as, as Plymouth itself, which is the second largest community. Uh, because of this, of course, we expected to get more cases just based on density based on the number of residents that live here in the city of Brockton. Of course, it's also, uh, the city's also home to, uh, I, I would say the county's uh, most vulnerable populations, uh, a lot of high number of senior citizens, uh, proud residents of the city of Brockton, and also a lot of people facing um, homelessness at this time. Uh, and of course, ever since this pandemic hit, um, and before it even came to the shores of the United States, um, my office has been working um, in, in, in combination with the healthcare professionals, uh, with Mr. John Yaswinski, who is the uh, CEO of Father Bill's Mainspring, uh, Sue Joss from Neighborhood, Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, uh, how to address the issue relative to homelessness. Um, I meet three times a week via uh, phone conference calls with the CEO, Kim Holland of Signature Brockton uh, Hospital, and a liaison from Good Samaritan Medical Center, uh, we have had representation from the VA and also a high point. Um, so again, we're, this is a, a team effort. Uh, we have to work together to figure out best practices. And the number one best practice, again, is to, to practice what the healthcare professionals are telling us in terms of uh, social distancing of at least six feet, um, washing your hands for no less than 20 seconds, uh, regular disinfecting of hard surfaces, which is extremely important. Uh, and also uh, staying in and around your home. Um, you know, we need to do that. Uh, in terms of what Brockton, the city of Brockton or my office is doing is working with the Board of Health. Um, John McGeary is the health officer, uh, working with Steve Hook, who's the executive director of BEMA, working with the city councils, working with the school committee members. Uh, of course, Mike Thomas, superintendent of schools, working with the state delegation, the three state representative, uh, Cassidy, Cronin, and Dubois, and Senator Mike Brady. I do wanna publicly thank Stephen Lynch, Congressman Lynch for helping us. Um, the Congressman came to Brockton two weeks ago and sat down uh, in social distancing uh, uh, parameters to express how can he help and he has. We've gotten some great supplies from MEMA. Um, but again, just to get back to Mr. Burleson's question, we are uh, working uh, collaboratively. Uh, we are gonna be uh, coming up with temporary housing within the city to address um, the homeless population. Um, we also have looked at potential uh, quarantine sites at some of the schools here in Brockton, North Middle School, gymnasium. Um, so again, uh, we are taking the, the measures that need to be taken to address this. 
Um, and also just stressing over and over again that we have to work together. We'll get through this, but it's going to get probably a lot worse before it gets better. Thank you for that question, Mr. Burleson. I truly appreciate it. Next question is from a Brockton resident, uh, Phyllis Ellis, who uh, also is the president of Brockton's NAACP. And uh, she's just uh, a great public servant in her own right and just a very, very wonderful person. And I want to thank her uh, for her question. Uh, and Phyllis's question is, can the city do its own stimulus since so many members of the community will be left out of the federal government stimulus packet? And I thank you for that question. And one thing that I like to say is I've been meeting with uh, virtually, again, on conference calls with the Chamber of Commerce, Metro South Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we just did a uh, virtual conference call a week ago with um, uh, Washington DC representative from the SBA, Small Business Administration. I'm having regular conversations with Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito uh, and Governor Baker's office as well. Um, and also um, in terms of trying to figure out here in Brockton what we can do for our small businesses and our businesses just as a whole. Working with the Downtown Business Association, which is John Marion, Montello Business Association led by uh, Scott Dwyer and the Campello Business Association uh, led by um, Ron Bethany, who's president. Um, we're doing weekly conference calls um, with the BRA, Brockton Redevelopment Authority, and of course the city planner, uh, Rob May. Um, so we're exploring, Phyllis, uh, collecting information, learning everything we can about this federalist stimulus that was recently passed. I am uh, feeling confident that small businesses here in the city of Brockton will get financial aid uh, on the federal level and on the state level. Uh, and we need to uh, really look at anything and everything that's going to help the small businesses right now. We know uh, with the uh, national state of emer the national emergency, federal emergency, the state of emergency, and as mayor, I declared a local emergency. Um, certain businesses are, are just not operational right now, or they're, they're really minimized right now. So. Um, again, we need to work collectively. We need to continue to host webinars, uh, update information to all the business owners here in the city of Brockton and all the residents. Um, again, um, any presentation that I've done on the past uh, is on the city's website. Uh, economic injury disaster loan information is up there definitely. Um, there's gonna be a, a process where you can submit your applications uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and again, another thing that I think uh, you really need to consider if you're a small business a person uh, is the unemployment. Um, again, the Career Center is, is, is open virtually right now, but the mechanisms in place uh, in terms of unemployment and helping those that qualify and expanded uh, qualifications is extremely important to Brockton business owners and Brockton residents. Department of Unemployed, uh, Unemployment Assistance is offering town hall sessions for individuals who have questions. Uh, regarding claims, and that's in several different types of languages, which would be helpful to the Brockton residents. Phone lines are being strained at this time, although the state is reassigning workers, um, but we're encouraging people to apply online uh, and sign up for a callback, and you will get a callback. Um, the federal government um, is, is waiving a certain waiting periods and expanding eligibility, including uh, self-employed and, and certain freelancers, independent contractors. So. Again, I'm encouraging Brockton businesses and Brockton uh, residents, please take advantage of uh, all the information that's available online right now. Uh, it goes back to uh, staying in and around your home. This is, is not an extended vacation, uh, but I do know that uh, there's a, a great detrimental impact right now to businesses here in the city of Brockton and then in our neighboring Plymouth County community and also in the Commonwealth and nation. So, um, you know, please, uh, Please look at uh, what the uh, websites uh, are offering in terms of information. Feel free to call my office here at City Hall, which is 508-580-7123. That's the mayor's uh, office uh, direct phone number. Call us for any questions. Check out, again, uh, www.brockton.ma.us uh, for information on the website. But, um, again, we're all in this together, um, and I'm, I'm really concerned about um, people not having the information. The information's changing on a regular basis, uh, and again, the mayor's office and me specifically will work with my team to, uh, to get that information out uh, in different languages uh, to the people 
to act as a, an assistance buffer to, uh, to help you. And I thank you. Thank you for that question, Phyllis. It was, it was really, really great. Appreciate it. The next question uh, is from uh, Calvina DeVeo. Uh, and I, I wanna thank you for this question. It's a very important question. And the question is, uh, what are the resources for rental and utility assistance during the pandemic in Brockton, Massachusetts? Uh, and thank you for that question. This is gonna be helpful to many, many Brockton uh, residents and business owners as well. Um, currently, uh, there is a moratorium um, on utility shutoffs uh, throughout um, the state of emergency. Uh, and that's been uh, in, in, in effect and it's, uh, it's in force. So um, we cannot, uh, you cannot have utilities shut off right now. That's a mandate. Um, that's the essence of the moratorium. So um, utilities uh, could face um, serious fines uh, up to a, about a million dollars if you violate this order. So again, um, the utility companies have to adhere to the moratorium. Um, also uh, important to know is that evictions and foreclosures are also currently suspended, um, which again is, is giving um, the, the um, homeowners uh, and the tenants um, some ability, which is uh, more than welcomed. Um, as also, they're expanding um, uh, the rental assistance for families in transition, which is also known as the RAFT, R-A-F-T. Um, the COVID-19 raft uh, will be set up along with uh, mass housing, uh, which will contribute about six, uh, no, $5 million um, to, uh, to the fund to keep households in stable situations uh, from facing uh, housing emergencies over the loss of income uh, and increase in expenses or, or both. So again, um, it's, it's projected about $5 million um, in, the, in here in, through mass housing, through the raft program. Uh, and again, Households experiencing uh, rent insecurity uh, due to the, uh, the impacts of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic will be able to apply for financial assistance up to, right now it's projected at $4,000. Uh, residents can apply for financial aid through their regional administering agency. Uh, and more information, uh, ladies and gentlemen, about the program can be found at this website. It's massmass.gov slash dhcd mass.gov slash dhcd that's the link and i would encourage anybody and everybody that's interested in that information to please go in there look it up um, if you need any assistance again do not hesitate to contact the mayor's office we're here um, even though city hall is closed i've closed it out of abundance of caution to protect the general welfare of the general public and the employees that work at city hall um, it is open by appointment only, so you could call me 580-7123 um, if you needed to speak to a specific department. Um, also, uh, I just want to remind you again that um, we're working every day to protect the safety and welfare of the general public, but the information that we're sharing is extremely important to each and every one of you, and I would encourage you to please check out the links and the websites that I'm talking about uh, during this uh, virtual town hall. I think it's extremely important and informative. So again, please look at, look at it, but don't hesitate to contact me in the, in the mayor's office. Um, the last question um, that I, I received is from uh, Mary Ellen Com uh, Crompton. Uh, and I wanna thank Mary Ellen for this. And um, she was wondering if the due date for renewing dog licenses uh, will change uh, due to City Hall being closed to the general public. And um, you know, I, I, I wanna thank her for that. There's a lot of dog owners here in the city of Brockton and of course, I've heard from multiple residents concerned over accessing city services during the pandemic. Um, again, we're, we're closed um, to the general public uh, really to protect their health and safety. But um, I just wanna let you know that of course, um, the due date for renewing uh, will be extended. Uh, as mayor, I, I've, I've reassured that, um, and, and I'm stressing that to you today, if you're a dog owner and you dog license, of course, I'm going to give you a grace period. It's the best thing to do and the right thing to do. Um, also, uh, I've mentioned this before, um, the excise tax, um, which, was, which was payable, um, you can go a um, couple different ways to pay that. But I just want to let you know that I made a mandate that as mayor, I've waived uh, any convenience fees. Um, you need to pay through the city website. 
um, uh, again, not through um, the, the agent, which is Kelly and Ryan, just go directly through the city website if you were gonna pay that. And if there were any convenience fees that were gonna be charged as mayor, I've already told the city treasurer, Mr. Brophy, to waive those. We've also, uh, as the mayor, I've also requested that um, the dates be expanded. Um, so no late fees would be, uh, would be charged. Uh, you have until Monday, uh, April 27th, again, to, uh, to make those payments. Uh, another piece of information I wanted to share with you is at City Hall, um, at the back door uh, in the parking lot near the handicap access, there's a drop box um, right outside. Uh, it's, it's in multiple languages, um, expressing to the residents exactly what it's for. And it's to, uh, to make a payment um, by mail, uh, but it's a, it's a drop box uh, in our office mail. So you would stick it in the mailbox and it would be picked up by, uh, by the treasurer's office. So it's just another amenity, another benefit that we're offering here at City Hall uh, to make it a little easier for the residents during such difficult, difficult times. Um, these, these are just really important, great questions that have been asked. And I do just also want to reiterate again, um, the superintendent of the schools, Mike Thomas, he's been giving great updates, um, phone calls, uh, uh, robo calls, reverse 911 calls. Um, my office has been working with the superintendent office. Uh, we know all public schools in Massachusetts by the governor's order have been closed and will be closed up until May 4th currently. Um, that also includes the, the Catholic schools, the parochial schools here, Trinity Catholic in Brockton or the charter school or Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical uh, High School over in Southeastern. Uh, which again, 65% of the student population um, from the city of Brockton. But I just wanted to, first of all, thank the teachers uh, that are reaching out to the students, uh, the administrators, um, and everybody that's volunteering their time during the day to give out the breakfast and the lunch programs. It hasn't stopped at all. It's offerings that are provided. And I just want to thank Chatwells, which actually generates the food, really good nutritionist food, uh, and the people, the staff of Brockton Public Schools, the school committee members that are volunteering their time, the city councilors that are volunteering their time. Uh, I want to personally thank City Council President Shirley Azak and Vice Chairman of the School Committee, uh, Mark D'Agostino, that are also really working diligently to get this information out uh, with the city councilors and with the school committee members, and also the two representatives over at the Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical High School uh, that serve the city of Brockton and, and the senior lead over there is Bishop Tony Branch. But again, I, I thought that this virtual uh, uh, town hall uh, is something that is extremely important to get the message out as the mayor of the city of Brockton. Uh, and I wanna thank everybody that's participating in this. I wanna thank everybody for the questions. We received some great questions. I hope that I answered your, uh, your questions. I look forward to doing this many, many, many more times. Um, I'm just asking everybody to please don't panic during this uh, health crisis, this pandemic. Take it serious, though. That's why I closed the playgrounds here in the city of Brockton. I did that again um, to protect the safety of the residents. Confined areas for children is not the right time. Um, the parks are still open at this time, but I'm really stressing and asking, please, please keep the social distancing at least six feet. Um, this is not an extended holiday. Um, People should not be having cookouts or having parties. It just should not happen. Um, again, we're, we're working together on this to solve the crisis um, with the healthcare professionals and with um, the experts in, in the homeless field and social services and schools. Um, and again, at the end of the day, um, I'm proud to be the mayor of the city of Brock and it really is an honor and a privilege. Um, it's a difficult time right now. I have three young children. Uh, my wife uh, and I are telling them to do exactly what I'm telling you. Uh, we need to take this serious. Do this. We just don't know how long it's going to take. We do know that COVID-19 is in the city of Brockton, right? We have uh, over 100 cases, um, and it will probably increase uh, over time. But again, we have the VA hospital, Good Samaritan Medical Center, a signature Brockton Hospital. We have Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. We have so many experts in healthcare here in Brockton that are working together and it's refreshing and I want to thank each and every one of them. But again, I want to thank you Brockton residents, Brockton constituents, Brockton taxpayers. I, I really want to thank you uh, for giving me the honor and privilege to serve as your mayor. We never expected this uh, 
when I was sworn in on January 6th. But listen, we're the city of champions. We work together. We're going to continue to work diligently and in a, in a uh, proactive, safe manner. And we're going to get through this. Rest assured, we're going to get through this. But again, contact my office, 508-580-7123 for any questions. Uh, we're keeping the office staffed. I have great team members, uh, really, really great staff here in the mayor's office. Um, and, and we're all working together to respond to your inquiries, to your calls. Uh, we, we also have an answering machine. And, and, and please leave a message if you call after, all this, after hours. Again, we're here 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And we're going to get back to you. So again, I want to thank you uh, for your patience, for your guidance. I want to thank specifically all the pastors and clergy and priests here in the city of Brockton that are offering me their prayers and their support. Uh, I do uh, prayer sessions twice a month with clergy members in Brockton, and it helps me spiritually, but um, it also helps get the message out to the wonderful people that attend the different churches here in the city of Brockton. But again, thank you for your attention to this uh, virtual town hall. I want to thank the Brockton Public Schools with their assistance in translating this. I wish you and your health and safety, and I will be giving regular updates in the near future. Thank you.